I love when Bible, biblical scripture and science align. It just tells me that we are definitely getting down to actually finding the truth and it's backing up what was written so many thousands and thousands of years ago. So if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, please like, please share. Uh, right now, currently I'm doing research for my book, Rosewood, but in doing that research, I'm actually, I'm kind of falling, I'm allowing myself to tumble down the, the, uh, or tumble through the rabbit hole because I'm learning so much about, um, our origin stories, uh, and our history. And it's just a really beautiful thing. So I came across this article in the New York times. It's called the human family tree. 10 Adams and 18 Eves is written by Nicholas Wade and it was published in May, May 2nd, 2000. So I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can find it. If you, if you want to read it on your own, you are more than welcome to. The book of Genesis mentions three of Adam and Eve's children, Cain, Abel, and Seth, but genetics is by tracing the DNA patterns found in people throughout the world, have now identified lineages descendants from 10 sons of genetic Adam and 18 daughters of Eve. The human genome is turning out to be a rich new archive for historians and prehistorians, one whose range extends from recent times to the dawn of human existence. Devler, Dels, Devilers. The Delvers in the DNA, never say that word, in the DNA archive have recently found evidence for a prehistoric human migration from Western Asia to North America, identifying the people who seem closest to the ancestral human population. And given substantial weight to the whispers long dismissed by historians that Thomas Jefferson fathered a family with the slave with his slave Sally Hemings. A New History of Britain and Ireland by Norman Daves, Davies, The Isles, Oxford University Press, begins with, a, the, the book is, in, is uh, published under the Oxford University Press, I should say that, begins with an account of Cheddarman, it was Cheddar or Cedar. So I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to say Cedarman. A 18,980 year old skeleton from which mitochondrial DNA was recently extracted. The DNA turned out to match that of Adrian Target, a teacher in Cedar, Cedar Village School, proving a genetic continuity, continuity that despite numerous invasions and enduring through nine millenniums, so this DNA would trace back to his distant ancestor or relative. That is really cool. Unlike the DNA test used in forensic cases, which it is designed to identify individuals, DNA analysis that seeks to reach back in time usually focuses on lineage, lineages, not individuals. From patterns in the DNA data, Biologists can often estimate the size of ancient populations, even the approximate dates when one group or of people split from another. Through DNA, though DNA can bear a historical question, often by acting as a long range paternity test, its most spectacular use has been to prehistory where it has added a new dimension to the bare framework provided by archaeology. The most detailed human family tree so far available is one constructed over many years by Dr. Douglas C. Wallace and his colleagues at the Emory University School of Medicine in Atlanta. Dr. Wallace's tree is based on mitochondrial DNA, tiny rings of genetic materials that are bequeathed only by the egg cell and thus through the maternal line, and thus through the maternal line. A counterpart tree for men based on analysis of the Y chromosome has been prepared by Dr. Peter A. Underhill and Dr. P. J. Offner of Stan Stanford University. Population geneticists 
believes that the ancestral human population was very small, a mere 2,000 breeding individuals, according to the calculation published last December. By the family tree based on human mitochondrial DNA does not trace back to the thousand women in the ancestral population. The tree is rooted in a single individual, the mitochondrial Eve, because, because all the other lineages fell extinct. Interesting. The same is true of the Y chromosome tree, a consequence of the fact that each generation, some men will have no children or only daughters. So the number of different Y chromosomes may steadily diminish, even if the pop population stays the same size. The ancestral human population lived somewhere in Africa, geneticists believe, and started to split up sometime after one 144,000 years ago, give or take 10,000 years. The inferred, the inferred time at which both the mitochondrial and the Y chromosome trees make their first branches. Mitochondria, which live inside the human cell, okay, mitochondria, which live inside human cells, but outside the nucleus, escape the shuffling of genes that occurs between generations and are passed unchanged from one from mother to child in principle all people should have the same string of dna letters in their mitochondria in practice mitochondrial dna has steadily accumulated changes over the centuries because of copying errors and radiation damage so that makes me wonder with the radiation damage how does that affect people who go through chemo? Oh. Because women are, because women were steadily spreading across the globe when many of these changes occurred, some changes are found only in particular regions and continents. Dr. Wallace discovered that almost all American Indians have mitochondria that belong to the lineages he named A, B, C, and D. Europeans, belong to a different set of lineages, which he designated H through K and T through X. The split between the two main branches in the European tree suggests that the modern humans reached European, Europe 39,000 years, 39,000 to 51,000 years ago. Dr. Wallace calculates a time that corresponds with the archeological date of at least 35,000 years ago. In Asia, there is an ancestral lineage, lineage, lineage known as M. M for uh, much more M. With, this, with, decent, with descendant branches E, F, and G. As well as the A through D lineages also found in the Americas. In Africa, there is a single main lineage known as L, L for Larry, <laughs> which is divided into three main branches. The youngest branch is common in East Africa and is believed to be the source of both Asian and European lineages. Dr. Wallace, Dr. Wallace's mitochondrial DNA lineages are known technically as the haplogroups, but more colonically as daughters of Eve, because all, all are branches of the trunk that stem from the mitochondri mitochondrial Eve. The Y chromosome tree has not yet been published by the Stanford researchers, but in a book that came out in March, Genes, People, and Languages, a, co a colleague of at the university, Dr. Luca Cavelli Sorfa, Sorza, Sorza, it's S F O R Z A. So, uh, sketched a preview of the findings. The tree is rooted in a single Y chromosomal atom and has 10 principal branches. Dr. Cavalli Zorfa uh, reports of these sons of Adam, the first three designated one, two, and three 
are found almost exclusively in Africa. Sons three lineage migrated to Asia and begat sons four through 10, who spread through the rest of the world to the Sea of Japan, son four, Northern India, son five, and the South Caspian Seas, sons uh, what did I leave out? six and seven. Dr. Cavelli Sorva believes these Y chromosome lineages may be associated with the major language groups of the world. The South Caspian population, for example, have been spoken Eurasian, the ancestral tongue of Indo-European to which English belongs, and the most of the and most of the continent other major languages families. But Dr. Wallace asks if his mitochondrial DNA lineages are also corresponded to the world's major language groups. Said he intended to be more cautious than Luca. Dr. Wallace has recently been exploring the root of the mitochondrial, D mitochondrial tree. In an article published in March in the American Journal of Human Genetics, he and colleagues identified the vas Vasakila king and his vas okay, V A S I K E L A. I'm sorry, not king, Kung. Vasakila Kung, K U N G of the northwestern Kalahari Desert in southern Africa as the population that lies nearest to the root of the human mitochondrial DNA tree. Another population that seems almost equally old is that of the Bayaka fin Finnese, I don't know, of Central Africa. Both people live in isolated regions which may be why their mitochondrial DNA seem little change, seems little change from that of the ancestral population. We are looking at the beginning of what we call Homo sapiens, Dr. Wallace said. So that name in Central, it's, it's B-I-A-K-A-P-Y-G-M-I-E-S, Biaka. I don't know, of Central Africa. I'll have to get the correct spelling and everything for that. One of the most vexed issues in human prehistory, prehistory is the timing and number of migrations in the Americas. Dr. Joseph Greenberg, a, ling a linguist, at Stanford University has proposed three migrations corresponding to the three language groups of the Americas, known as Amer Amerind, Na, Deen, and Eskimo Alut. Dr. Wallace's mitochondrial DNA data broadly supports the general thesis through the arrival of the Amer Amerind speakers seems more complex than a single migration. Of the A through D lineages found in American Indians, A, C, and D also occur in Siberian people, suggesting that their ancestors were the, the principal source of the American speakers migration. But the B lineage through it is found elsewhere in Asia as not turned up in Siberia a hint that the B people may have taken a C route to the Americas, then merged their merged with their A, C, and D carrying cousins. Okay. Oh, I should say A negative, C negative, and D negative carrying cousins. So, um. In 1998, Dr. Wallace and his colleagues discovered the X pattern, a rare European lineage among the Northern Native Americans, such as Ojibwe and Seuss. At first, they assumed it came from intermarriage with modern Europeans, but the, uh, but the American X lineage turned out to be pre-Columbian 
and its owners would have arrived in America either 15,000 to 30,000 years ago, depending on the certain genetic assumptions. The European X lineage seems to have originated in Western Asia around 40,000 years ago. Dr. Wallace suggests a part of this group may have been their way to America via Siberia, even though even though no traces of the X lineage have yet turned up in Eastern Asia, a transatlantic route is possible is a possible alternative. When modern humans first started to leave Africa about 50,000 years ago, by present reckoning, they probably consisted of a small of small groups of hunter gatherers a few hundred strong in their determined exploration of the of the world before them. They must have overcome with the primitive means of their disposal, the extreme rigors of climate, terrain, and perhaps archaic human populations like the fearsome Netherlands. Oh, I'm sorry. The fearsome Neanderthals <laughs> who had preceded them out of Africa. The biologist Edward O. Wilson, in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, mused that a new basis for spiritual values must be found, not the not in the usual religious sources, but in the but in what he sees as the inspiring story of human origins and history. We need to create a new epic based on the origins of humanity, he said, adding Homo sapiens have have had one hell of a history. And I am speaking both of deep history, evolutionary, genetic history, and then added on that and in interacting with it, the cultural history recorded for the past 10,000 years or so. Many of biologists are reconstructing the human past, certainly believe their work has value that, tr that transcends genetics. Although the lineage trees are based on genetic differences, most of these differences lie in the regions of DNA that do not code for genes and have no effect on the body. We are all Africans at the Y chromosome level and we are all, we are all, wait, level, and we are, we are really all brothers, Dr. Underhill said. Dr. Wallace remarked that since we started working on mitochondrial DNA in the late 1970s, what I have found astounding is that it clearly shows in we are all one human family. The polygamy in the yeah the polygamy in Africa goes back to the origins of our species, but the fingers of L3 are touching Europe and Asia saying that we are all closely closely related. Whether or not genetic prehistory is suitable material for a modern origin myth, it is about to be made available to a wider public. Last month, a company called Oxford Ancestors set up business with the offer to sell customers with the seven daughters of Eve they are descended from. Oh, to tell customers, I'm sorry, to tell customers which of the seven daughters of Eve they descended from. Almost all European belong all Europeans belong to only seven of the nine mitochondrial lineages found in Europe. The test requires sending an ex sending a sample of cells brushed from the inside of the cheek for a mere $180. Anyone of European and ancestry can establish the start of genealogy far senior to Charlemagne's. The company founder is Dr. Brian Sykes, a human geneticist at University of Oxford in England. On the reasonable, on the reasonable basis that the founder of Dr. Wallace mitochondrial DNA lineages were real women, Dr. Sykes gave them names and sketched in details of their likely dates and origin. Thus, people found to belong to Hapla Group U will be told they are descended from Ursula. You lived about, oh, who lived about 45,000 years ago in Northern Greece. Ancestors of the ex is Zena, who lived 25,000 years ago and is ago in the Caucasus Mountains, as 
is fulfilling Dr. Wilson's suggestion. Dr. Sykes said he had worked on mitochondrial framework, I'm sorry, mythological framework for this for these seven women in respect to the artist, arduous times in which they must have lived and triumph of spreading their mitochondrial DNA to almost all the inhabitants of Europe. It is now working on tests to identify other lineages around the world, including 14 in Africa and 16 in Eurasia and the Americas. I don't think the stuff should be con confined to academics, academics, he said. Oh, that's the end of the article. So what do you think? So basically, if we understand this right, you could tell me if I'm wrong. It sounds to me, what I got out of this is that, um, so the 10 sons and three daughters. Now, they had, if you think about it, you can't count uh, Abel, because Abel was murdered. So he doesn't have any offspring. So, or that they said, that there was no offspring that they spoke of. So it was, it was, uh, you know, whatever. So technically, Adam, they had like technically 11 sons, right? If I understand it correctly. Anyway, out of that, they found three main uh, lineages coming out of Africa for, and this is for all. And groups one, two, and three. Group three is uh, Asia. It's, it's it, it, they just said it begat groups four through 10. So then that came and they went into Asia and they said that is like the second largest group. Um, it's very, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. You got to read the article for yourself. It's something you got to really like pick apart. But to me, it does line up with what the Bible says. So the Bible didn't list all of Adam's kids, Adam and Eve's kids. It did only speak about three of them, you know. Uh, but there is like a one sentence that says that they had more sons and daughters. So <laughs> it's just really, really interesting. And then, but then the flood happens with Noah. But, and see, like, and so when Noah comes off the boat, he has, he has three sons who are both, who are all married. So that's three sets right there. That's pretty interesting. That is very interesting. I just realized that Adam had, um, Noah had three sons when they came off the boat. He had three sons and then his wife. And um, back in those days, there a lot, if you listen to it, uh, or if you, you look back in the Bible, a lot of them didn't start having kids till they were in their hundreds. Until as time goes on, it becomes younger and younger. You know, uh, it went from 100 to like 35 and then like 32. And I was like, that's just crazy. But yeah, some of them didn't have their first child until they were 100. So interesting. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try to bring more stuff like this. But these are the things that I'm studying and researching for the books that I'm doing. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comment below. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.